In today's episode of Willful, we spoke with Melinda Prudham, a Toronto-based portrait painter who believes in a broader definition of female beauty, regardless of age, size, ethnicity, or personal style. What's your favorite thing about your chosen career path? Ah, uh, my goodness. I feel like my favorite thing right now is when I get to interact with women uh, about my work. Well, anyone in general, actually men too. Um, because I often hear that my message and my work inspires them to, to love themselves a little more, be a little less, less harsh on themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, that to me is like the most amazing thing a human can do <laughs> yeah. make another human feel happy or better um, so to me that's at this moment my most favorite thing who was the first person you met who was living the artistic life that you wanted to live um, so I think the first person who was doing it full-time that I looked at and I thought wow I would love to have that situation, <laughs> um, is Mandy Sale. Um, she's a, an artist out of North Bay. That's where I went to art school. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did a project on her while I was uh, doing my minor in art. And I just loved her work. And she was just so down to earth and happy. And mm. I just, I still to this day admire her very much. I still follow her online and we interact with each other. She's yeah, just a really lovely person, and I feel like we can relate even more, I can relate to her even more now because uh, she's a migraine sufferer, and since I've fallen ill, I can kind of even more so relate to her struggles, not that we have the same struggles, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, she, she does it full time, and her husband's very supportive of her, and uh, she has, uh, she lives with many bunnies. She rescues bunnies. <laughs> I'm a cat lady myself, but uh, yeah, I just looked at her with her beautiful family and her furry babies and her supportive husband, and I just thought, oh, I would love to have that. That just seems like the ultimate dream to yeah. me. And I'm kind of living that dream. So, <laughs> For a lot of beauty brands, um, women's low self-esteem is good for business. Yes. How do you feel about this? Does it get into your art in any way? Oh, um, I don't so much uh, discuss like brands in particular, but I do talk about like the entire culture of uh, women being fed the idea that they need this to be enough. You need to be thinner. You need to have this new trendy whatever. Potion. Clo clothing, potion, makeup, whatever it is. Uh, you know, you need to say this new it word, you need to have this type of hair. I don't know, like I try to make women see that you can make up your own rules. I haven't been hooked into any of that stuff for a very long time. I have no idea what's in style. I could be walking around like a total faux pas and I would not know. I do not care. <laughs> so I try to perpetuate that mentality. Um, and I do try and portray women who are just like, themselves you know it, maybe they do conscribe to a specific style but it's a style that they feel represents their character and yeah. that's awesome I think yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what's your best piece of advice to young artists we feel so grateful to be artists like we feel so blessed because we are we really are blessed to do the thing that we love doing that we're best at so we kind of push ourselves beyond what's healthy because we yeah. feel this guilt that if we don't make the most out of all the hours in the day, then we don't deserve to have this dream job. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to push myself and other artists away from that type of thinking because it's just not healthy. Like a human body can only do so much. Yeah. We need to sleep. Yeah. Humans need to sleep, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm glad you're saying this. It's important. It has to be said, especially in the yeah. age of social. Because yeah. I think that social media and positive feedback that you might get on Instagram, for example, can just fuel that determination to work even harder. Absolutely. And you have to shut it off. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I've gotten into a routine where I check. I don't have a cell phone. I had a cell phone at the beginning of my career, and that's one of the things that I ditched. Hmm. Beep, beep, check. Beep, beep, check. It really disconnects you from your work as an artist, like constantly going back and forth to your social media. So I've forced myself now to only check it in the morning, maybe once in the afternoon, and then a couple times in the evening. Yep. Uh, 
and that's it. Like I, I can't constantly look at notifications. I feel totally disconnected from my life when I do that, to be honest. I feel like I'm like an outsider looking in at my own life when I'm constantly connected to like this other world. I super value my social media, but I feel like there is a line where it kind of takes over your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. trying to get away from that. Because <laughs> you're right, it feeds you. It really does feed you. It's an addiction um, that can lead to wonderful, successful things, but can also bring you down a, a little bit of a darker path, too, yeah. if you let it. Well, Linda, thank you for being willful. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs>